Today we will discuss Friedrich Nietzsche's work Also Sprach Zarathustra, in English Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Friedrich Nietzsche was a German philosopher, cultural critic, poet, philosopher. Um, he studied Latin, Greek, and his work has had a profound influence on modern intellectual history. He was born in Prussia, now Germany, and died in August of the year 1900 in Weimar, Germany. Nietzsche's body of work touched a wide range of topics, including art, religion, culture, tragedy, history, science, and is characterized by his critique of truth, morality, and contemporary culture. What we'll do is we'll discuss some of the themes in his text, Thus Spoke Zarathustra. So, also Sprach Zarathustra is one of Nietzsche's most famous works. It is rich in themes and ideas, many of which challenge the conventional beliefs and morality of Nietzsche's time. It is written in a form of a poetic novel it features the teachings of Zarathustra based on the historical founder of Zoroastrianism, but used in his tectia as a fictional character who descends from his solitary living in the mountains to share his wisdom with humanity. So we'll discuss some of the major themes in Also Sprach Zarathustra. First, the one that comes to mind um, and one that's used often is perhaps the most famous of the lot is the Ubermensch. Nietzsche's idea of a new man who create, creates his own values and meaning in life, transcending traditional moralities and beliefs. This figure is presented as the goal for humanity, embodying self-mastery, creativity, and strength of will. Another theme that's prominent in his text is the death of God. Zarathustra announces the death of God, symbolizing the end of traditional Christian values and the moral vacuum left in the wake of modern secularism. This theme explores the consequences of this death for society and the individual challenging readers to confront the implication of a world without a universal moral order. Then third would be uh, the theme of eternal recurrence. So central in the book is the idea of eternal recurrence, which suggests that all events will happen over and over again, infinitely. Nietzsche uses this idea to emphasize the importance of living one's life in such a manner that one would be willing to relive the same life eternally, thereby affirming life and existence. This kind of parallels the Buddha's notion of the level of Bodhisattva, where in that particular samsara, in that cycle of rebirth, you live a life of moral of heightened moralities and compassion and that your soul will be snuffed. Then will to power. Although not as prominently featured in Zarathustra as in some of Nietzsche's other later works, the concept of the will to power underlies much of the narrative. It refers to the basic driving force of human beings which Nietzsche argues is not survival or reproduction, but a fundamental will to exert and expand one's power. Through Zarathustra's teachings, Nietzsche critiques the conventional moral distinctions between good and evil, which he sees as rooted in slave morality, propagated by the weak and oppressed. He contrasts this with master morality, which values strength, nobility, and power. 
In this case, the distinction between good and evil reminds me of Zoroastrianism, the very religion of Zarathustra, with the duality of the good and evil. Angra Mainyu as the good, as, as the bad, and Ahura Mazda as the god of good. So Zarathustra teaches the love of life, acceptance of the world as it is, including its suffering and challenges, and the embrace of fate. This theme of life affirmation runs counter to the ascetic, life-denying values, nature, attributes to traditional religions like Buddhism, Hinduism, etc. The book celebrates the individual's quest for self-overcoming and self-creation. Zarathustra encourages his followers to surpass themselves, to overcome their own limitations, and to forge their own paths in life. So individualism and self-overcoming. Also, Zarathustra is a complex and often ambiguous work filled with symbolic language and poetic imagery. Its themes are not presented as a systematic philosophical argument, but are woven through Zarathustra's speeches and experiences. The work has been interpreted in numerous ways and continues to be a subject of scholarly debate and inspiration across various fields. Having studied religious studies and sociology, I have attended uh, many lectures on Nietzsche's also Sprach Zarathustra in philosophy departments, for example, and I always find it somewhat easier having the historical religious background to the context of Friedrich Nietzsche's also Sprach Zarathustra, context of revelation and further interdisciplinary reading supports a better understanding of anything academically.